You're watching week two of the basics of biblical Hebrew, and this week we're covering vowels. Let's go. Last week we covered the 22 Hebrew consonants. That's your main alphabet, your Aleph Beit. This week we're going to cover vowels and how they work in the Hebrew Bible. As you can see here, we have the word for word. The word for word? Davar. Davar. It has two comments one underneath the Dalet, and one underneath the Beit. We're going to learn about all of these different kinds of vowels. We have several different types that cover them, so let's dive in. First up, we have short vowels. We have the Pathak. It's a simple horizontal line underneath the consonant. It sounds like an A, as in bat. We have Segol. This is three dots in a triangular pattern basically the mathematical symbol for because and it goes beneath the consonant it produces an e sound as in set we have hirik it produces an i sound as in bit and the cool thing about it is just like the english vowel i has a little dot at the top the hebrew has a little dot below the consonant and that's how you know it's the letter I, bit. We have Kamitz Hatuf. Now this produces an O sound. It's a short O as in ah, bot. The Kamitz looks like a T beneath the consonant. And lastly, we have the Kibbutz or Kibbutz. It produces an OO sound as in rule. And it's a series of three dots from right to left in ascending order and it's a diagonal series, okay? So it's a diagonal series in ascending order from right to left, three dots. Why do I say right to left? Because Hebrew is red from right to left, right to left. So those are our short vowels. We also have some long vowels. There's two kinds. We have changeable long and unchangeable long. We'll talk about the difference in a moment, but first let's cover the changeable long vowels. We have three. First, we have comets. Now, this is different from the comets hatuf, kinda. They both produce the same sound, ah. One happens to be related to the O class. One happens to be related to the A class. I wouldn't pay too much attention to that. It's good to know about. They are different. Functionally, I don't know of a whole lot of instances where it's really gonna make a difference but you do need to be aware about it. The comet's changeable long vowel is A as in ah, father. It looks identical to the comet's hatuf. Identical. So the only way you're going to know it's a comet's hatuf is your knowledge of vocabulary and maybe some rules around syllabification or syllabification and pronunciation but context will probably help. Next, we have tsere. This is a long E sound, as in they. It's two horizontal dots beneath the consonant. And last, we have holum. It's uh, an O sound, as in roll. And it's a simple singular dot above and to the left of the consonant. Now, let's talk about the unchangeable long vowels. What makes it unchangeable? it has an actual consonant as part of the vowel. So not only does it have these dots or lines beneath the consonants, it adds a consonant after it. So if you were to take away the little dots and lines beneath, you could still tell there's a vowel there, essentially. That's what makes it unchangeable. No matter how you slice it, you know you're dealing with a vowel. We'll talk about that more later. So we do have the Comets hey, producing the same long A sound as in father. You have the comets below the, the consonant, but then you add the hey after the consonant. Collectively, the comets hey is the vowel. So while hey is a consonant, in this usage, it becomes a vowel. We have the tsereyod producing the E sound as in they. 
So we have the Sere beneath the Dalit, but then we add the Yod after the Dalit. And again, collectively, the Tsere Yod become the vowel. We have Segel Yod, producing the long E sound as in better. It's the first E we're talking about. Better. So we have the Segel, the three dots, and then we add the Yod. And again, collectively, these two become the vowel. We have the Hiric Yod as in machine, very common this. We have the holom vav. Now the vav is not pronounced. So you just have o and it comes as in roll and it comes after the consonant, not below, but after. Then you have the shurik, which produces a u sound as in u, as in rule. And again, the vav is not pronounced. It's the combination of the vav with the uh with the dot that forms the ooh sound now we can see where vowels will de defect sometimes for example the long holum vav will sometimes shorten in certain contexts to just the holum so the vav drops out entirely or with the shurik the shurik will actually drop out entirely and be replaced somewhere with a Kibbutz, kibbutz. And then sometimes the Hiric Yod will simply drop the Yod and you'll see just the Hiric. So those are defective in the sense that the unchangeable long vowel suddenly change. <laughs> it's kind of funny like that. You'll find with Hebrew, as with many languages, they have rules, except for when they don't. There's exceptions to every rule. Why does this uh, occur? Well, I think it's simply because the vowels were not originally part of the text. That was added in later by the group of scribes known as the Masoretes. So we use what's called the Masoretic text. But originally those vowels were not there. And I think that's partly why we see uh, de defective vowels from time to time. Because it's more about the sound, not necessarily about the vowels that are pointed. But I don't really know. Lastly, we have reduced vowels or what's known as hatef vowels. These are all going to have the same effect. You have the pathak, which is supposed to be an A sound. You have the segel which is supposed to be an E sound, and you have the comments, which is supposed to be an O sound. All three will sound the same, as in the A in amuse. Very short, muse. Not amuse, not amuse, amuse. So just be aware, if you see a pathak with two vertical dots next to it, it's a hatef. Those dots are called a shava. These shavas are silent shava. It makes no difference. You know to shorten the path back. You know to shorten the single. You know to shorten the comments to a very brief, short A sound. Uh, uh, uh. And that's it. One note on Holum as it pertains to Seen and Sheen. Because sometimes, not always, often not, but sometimes the dot in the Seen or the Sheen will combine. If we take Sheen, for example, in yosh beam or yosh beam, the dot in the sheen is doing double duty. Not only is it the dot for the sheen, it's also the dot for the holum after yod. Doesn't always have to do that, but it does in this instance. I found another example for seen, and that's with sova. The accent's actually over this over the scene. Usually the accent goes last, but in this case it goes first. Anyways, I digress. You'll learn more about pronunciation and syllabification next week. Scene dot is doing double duty. It's also functioning as the holum. Now let's talk about the Dagesh Forte. We've already talked about its brother, Dagesh Lene. If you recall, Dagesh Lene occurs in the Bagad Kafats. And it changes from a shorter sound, as in uh, the bait is usually pronounced with a V sound, 
when you add the dog lene, it becomes a b sound, much more strong. Well, there can also be a dog forte. Dog forte doubles the consonant in which it occurs. It can, incur, it can occur with any other consonant except for gutturals. It can occur in Bagad Kafat, so context will be important. You just need to know about it. We don't do transliterations. When you do transliterations, you would double, literally double the letter, the consonant. Because we're not doing transliterations, it's not really super important, but you do need to be aware of it for when we get to other aspects of, of uh, the Hebrew language. It might be helpful to understand the rules. One note is that gutturals, you have Aleph, Ayin, He, Chet, Resh. None of those take Dagesh Lene. None of those take Dagesh Forte. Now, we talked about the 22 consonants. And that's true. But as I said before, Hebrew has lots of exceptions. Okay, so this isn't really an exception per se, but Aleph and He can function when we're talking about unchangeable long vowels as A vowels. Yod, when we're talking about unchangeable long vowels, can function as E and I vowels. Vav, when we're talking about unchangeable long vowels, can function as O and U vowels. They're consonants, but they can also function as vowels. Confused yet? Nah, not at all. This is easy. So that covers the first two chapters. Last week we covered chapter one. This week we covered chapter two, covering the vowels. So now you know your consonants and you know your vowels. Next, you need to learn how to put it together and learn how to pronounce things and start learning words, okay? We call this process syllabification, learning your syllables so that you can learn to pronounce things. We're going to cover that next week in chapter three. So stick around. Thank you for joining. I appreciate it. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. If you haven't already, hit the follow button. Follow me on WordPress. And lastly, comment below. What's your favorite vowel? I want to know. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.